A debate that has raged for many years and continues to draw many different opinions and arguments is what is the definition of a web designer? Too often these days I am confronted by people who say why should I do an expensive web design course or pay an expensive web designer when I can create a decent website myself in a few minutes using some or other online service like Wix or WordPress? This is a valid argument and one that haunts people who make a living out of web design. Let's take this argument away from web design and look at some familiar scenarios. For example, why should I pay a plumber to fix my leaking tap when I can patch it up with some silicon? Why should I pay a baker to create me a birthday cake when I can buy an instant cake mix from the supermarket and do it myself at a tenth of the price? Why should I pay a mechanic to service my car when my friends know how to do an oil change and check out the basics? These are all valid arguments and there are times when you should not pay someone professional to do the job and times when you should. Let's look closer at the birthday cake scenario. If you want a simple chocolate cake for, for your birthday, then sure, you can buy an instant box cake, follow the recipe and hey presto, you'll have a pretty decent birthday cake. But can you call yourself a baker? No. If you wanted a special cake that required fancy finishes and flavorings, a box cake will not do and you probably won't be able to acquire the skills in time to make it yourself. It would be best to pay a professional to give you exactly what you want. This person can call themselves a professional baker. The same applies to web design. If all you want is a simple cookie cutter style website to be able to sell your homemade produce, then you need not learn all the necessary skills to design one from scratch and you need not pay a web designer. But if you want something special, something that a designer has developed from the ground up with your product and target market in mind, a site that no one else will have and that truly reflects your brand, then pay a web designer to do it. Web design as a discipline requires certain basic skills in order to earn that title web design or web designer. You can't use the instant box cake approach to web design and call yourself a web designer. You have to master a range of skills first, much, much the same as the baker had to master a wide range of skills in order to be able to give you the bespoke cake that you wanted and call themselves a professional baker. So let's look more closely at what these basic skills are. Design skills, a solid grasp of design principles and their application to the web design field. Graphic skills, the ability to create and edit any kind of graphic or image required for a web page. After all, a website with no imagery would be pretty boring. HTML, a very solid grasp of the basic language that drives all web pages. Without being an HTML ninja, you cannot call yourself a web designer. CSS, a very solid grasp of the underlying language that goes hand in hand with HTML to enable you to lay out and style web pages. JavaScript and or jQuery, not as critical, but certainly a basic functional knowledge of how to use JavaScript or jQuery to address and control elements on a page is quite important. Basic PHP, even less important and certainly not critical, but helpful if a web designer can at least edit and customize PHP scripts, if not create from scratch. This is by no means an exhaustive list of web design skills, but it's probably the most common skills web designers have. Many web designers have way more skills, for example, animation and motion graphics skills, search engine optimization skills, and so on. But the core skills a web designer should have are listed here. If you have all of these skills, it doesn't matter what platform or tools you use to create your web pages and sites, you can call yourself a web designer. Now that we have established the basic skills a web designer should have, let's look at some of the common tools and platforms that web designers use. Photoshop for graphics and image manipulation. Illustrator for vector design elements such as logos, icons, badges, etc. Dreamweaver as the most full-featured web design tool. WordPress for blog-driven sites. Adobe Muse for a more visual approach to web design. And content management systems in general like Drupal and, Dr and Joomla. Let's break this down further. A person can use all of these tools without having the basic skills already discussed. But being able to use Photoshop 
and or Illustrator without an understanding of good design is limiting. Being able to use Dreamweaver without knowing anything about HTML and CSS is extremely limiting. Being able to use Muse without knowing anything about HTML and CSS means you are locked into the Muse ecosystem. Being able to use WordPress without knowing anything about HTML, CSS and even PHP means you are limited to working with templates and online stylers. So ultimately it is not the tools you use that makes you a web designer, it is the knowledge you have of the basic web technologies and how to take advantage of these tools in the application of that knowledge. I can buy myself a racing bike and all the apparel to go with it, but this does not automatically make me a Tour de France legend. It would take years of training before I came even close. So if all you want is a cookie cutter website, go right ahead and use any of the hundreds of online platforms that require almost no skill to use. But if you want to become a web designer, you know what you need to do. My advice for a pr prospective web designer is to study design aesthetics and design principles and how these principles are adapted for web design. This in itself is quite a complex subject as there are many variables to consider when planning a website design. Become a master of Photoshop and Illustrator. This should include creating web page wireframes, style tiles, prototypes and any type of graphics you require. This should include a solid grasp of graphic formats and optimizing graphics. Make sure you have a solid grasp of HTML and CSS. These are the two core languages that drive all web pages. Without an understanding of these, you are at a distinct disadvantage. Try and acquire a functional understanding of JavaScript and or jQuery. This does not mean you have to be able to write complex scripts, but you should at least be able to follow the syntax of the language and tinker with existing scripts to make them work for you and ideally be able to address elements on your page with JavaScript in order to control them with behaviors. And finally, make sure you learn how to use Dreamweaver as the best, by far, tool to help you create code quickly and efficiently and work with page elements and content in an interface designed for web design professionals. If you achieve all of the above, you can proudly wear the badge of web designer. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and see you next time.